Hi everyone, today I want to talk about a, a sort of a strange aspect of closed type families that came up a few days ago on Twitter and, and I thought I thought you all would find this interesting in, in that there's types that don't really exist in Haskell and yet, and yet, because they might potentially kind of sort of exist, it stops us from writing certain closed type families that would be useful. Um, okay, so uh, so what is a closed type family? So a closed type family is essentially a function that's defined on types. Um, so so a, a simple example is something like this. We can have f a whoops uh, f int equals bool and f car equals double. And then now if I write a function g that goes from f int to oh I don't know car I can now say g true equals x and g false equals y. And this will all work once we have the right extensions enabled. It should just be type families for this program. Yes, good. Um, so so here I said that f int equals bool, f car equals double, and because I've written f int here, that's really the same as bool, and then this all works. Everything is happy here. This is no problem. Um, what's, what's challenging, though, with closed type families is that we actually need to treat these um, equations in order from top to bottom. So an interesting thing happens if I say f a equals double down here. Um, so right now this program is still accepted, right? Because f int is still bool, and I said you know f of anything else is double. So that means I can write h here. So if I do f, I don't know, maybe car, and that can go to well, let's make it simple. So here we have h equals id. Now let me make it more explicit. hx equals x, right? So this is only going to type check if the type on if the type of the argument is the same as the type of the result. Um, and here this indeed works because f of int equals bool, but because we interpret these equations in order, just like we do for a normal term level function, um, anything else is going to go to double. Um, okay, so what about our friend j here? So if I say j goes from f a to double, and now I say jx equals x, now we have a problem. Um, oh, oh! It complains about an injective type family. Blah blah blah. Uh, we could just fix that by having another argument of type A. The, the problem here is that at a use site of J, I want to be able to. I need to be able to know what choice of A is is. And from F A, because F is not generally injective, right? We don't. We can't know what the argument is from knowing uh, what the result of F A is. Um, it, we can't infer what A is at a use site of J. And so by doing this, now every use site, we're going to pass something as the first argument, and we can look at its type and sort of figure out what A is. Um, but now we're going to get a different error. This is the error that I wanted to get. Um, couldn't match expected type double with actual type F A. Well, that's a bit silly, right? Because it says here F A equals double. I thought that meant F A should equal double. The problem here is that this we need this to be to hold true. This this um, definition for J needs to work for any choice of A, um, including perhaps int. And so the way I've defined my function, if f int equals bool, then f of anything that isn't int equals double. And here I don't know anything about A. In fact, it might be int. So I can't optimistically assume it's double because then I might end up with a with an error where bools and doubles get confused. That would be very unsound. If we did that, we could use it to implement unsafe coerce, which is bad. Um, so here, rightly, GHC rejects J, saying, ah, "I'm not really sure about this FA thing. I don't really know what's going on here." Um, and that's the that's the correct behavior, right? Because this is only this second equation of my closed type family is only true if A is not in fact int. Okay, so so far so good. This is all nice and happy. Let's get to something that's not quite as happy. Um, or actually, let's let's stop along the way to something else that's happy. Um, let's let's have something like this. Okay, so now we're going to get rid of G H and J and start again. So here, this this new F is essentially a type level equality check, right? If the two things are the same, then I want bool. If we know that they're different, I want double. Um, okay, so now, now we can look at an example of this. So if I say f int int goes to bool, now I can just do this. And oh, uh, oh, I haven't done this correctly. That should fix that. Okay. Um, so here, because these are the same, then we know that x really has type bool and everything is okay. Down here, if I have int f int car goes to double, uh, then that's going to be accepted because I know int is different from car. 
Um, and so, so up here, this we can now tell the difference between two things that are the same and two things that are different. So that seems like a good idea. Um, okay, let's go a step further. Let's say if we have FAA, that's going to be bool. And now what if we have FA list of A, that's going to be double. Now this looks sensible, or actually I can even do, let me do something slightly more general so it's a little easier to wrap your head around. Um, we could do FA list of B equals double. Um, so here, well, I'm going to get an error now in H because F int car, well, that doesn't actually match either of these cases. So I don't really know what F int car is. Um, but if I make this a list thing, then everything is good again. All right now we, now we know what's going on. Um, so the question here is, well, one, before we get to the, the question, um, we can look at this. Is this going to type check? Sure, because here, FAA, I said for any A, FAA equals bool. Um, and now I can add, I can do finally do K, F A list of B goes to double, K, whoops, K X equals X. And oh, it's this silly ambiguous uh, type family thing again. So let's just get rid of that. Um, turns out that this is not technically an ambiguous uh, type. It sort of looks like it should be, but because F A A reduces to bool for any A, it turns out we don't really need to know what A is. Um, I don't want to get distracted by that. Um, okay, so now we get another error. Cannot match expected type double with actual type F A list of B. But once again, I've said F A list of B is double. So you'd think that indeed we would see F A list of B and that would be double. Well, this, this of course is, is sort of the same case that we had just a few minutes ago um, where we saw that the first equation sort of blocked the second equation. So what we have to worry about is we have to worry about cases where the second equation matches. This second equation definitely matches, but we know that this first equation um, can't ever possibly match. We want to see sort of if there are any cases actually whether, um, where the second equation matches, but maybe later the first equation can match. The problem here is that it looks like this first equation, that should only apply when we have two things that are the same. So can, can these two things ever be the same? Oh, I suppose they could. What if we have L, which is F A, well, F list of A, list of A. Now let's make my window a little bit bigger here. Um, so if we have F list of A, list of A, so that means that they're the same. And here we have something and list of B. So indeed, this, this case, we don't really know which case this should go in. It's going to work out that because this, this equation comes first, this is going to be bool. And if I write this, oops, let me comment out the bad one here, then everything is okay. Um, so now I want to go back to this case here where we have F A list of A. And now I'm going to change this around. And let's see what errors we get. Oh, so K is still not working. All of the other ones work. Oh no, now H isn't working, is it? Oh, this has to be int for H to work. Um, and then if we look here, yeah, it's just K. Good. Um, so now it's the same thing. Uh, oh, no, it's not the same thing because of that silly extra argument there. Um, so now it's the same thing. Could not match expected type double with actual type F A list of A. So let's try the same game that we did with L here and try to find something that matches both of them. So it means that we have to have a type that is that both of the arguments to F are the same and that the second one is the first one but surrounded by a list. That seems kind of hard to do, right? So I can write F blah here and then this is list of blah. Oh, but now, but now this one also has to be list of blah. Oh, but now this needs to be list of list of blah. And hmm, we're going to have to keep on adding brackets. And so it looks like really this second equation here should always match, right? This first one, if the second one matches, it looks like the first one can't ever match. But it can. if we have listy. So listy is a very strange type family. It's strange for two reasons. Um, one of them is that it has no arguments, but actually type families don't really need arguments. It's, it's strange, but it's nothing. I could have put an argument here. Uh, 
uh, uh, I'm not going to at this point, but but I could. That doesn't change the, the, uh, the other strange thing. The other strange thing is, of course, it's very strangely recursive, right? Listy, if we sort of were to compute it out, it turns out to be sort of the infinitely nested list. Um, and indeed, when I try to compile this file with Listy, I'm going to get, oh, we need undecidable instances. So let's add undecidable instances. Um, and, and then now we end up, oh, uh, L is causing us trouble, but let's not really worry about that. It's K that I care about. Um, so, so here, if we look at K, we're still, we still have the problem with K, of course. I haven't done anything with K. But now, if we think about A here, what if we think about this being F of listy, list of listy? Well, now this actually matches both equations, right? Listy and list of listy are the same type, so the first equation matches. And very quite clearly, the second equation also matches. And because of the possibility that some pernicious user might come along and write listy, it means that we can't accept k as written. Very disappointing, um, because in some cases we want to accept we, we want to accept things like hey this actually hurts people in practice um, and I will dig up a ticket for you and, and link to it in the in the um, in the description of uh, someone actually trying to do this it's really quite disappointing because we no one ever really is going to write listy but we don't know how to stop them from doing it right to stop them from writing listy we would need a proper termination checker because here this listy is very obviously um, not behaving very well but maybe someone writes something that's kind of like listy that looks like it's behaving well but actually reduces to the same thing um, and this is in general impossible to check right we know this uh, 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 due to Alan Turing's research right this has been a long known problem that we can't solve what's called the halting problem we don't know when we have non-termination um, and so because of this we sort of shrug and say we can't really make F work the way that we want to and this is very sad um, but we don't really know quite what to do about it um, so uh, in any case, if you write code like this and you run into this, this problem, now maybe you'll know a little bit more about why. Um, uh, feel free to follow the tickets and, and the other links in the, in the description and find more description and more discussion about this. Uh, I would like to find a nice, a nice story here, but I really don't know one. Um, anyway, I hope this has been interesting. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.